The business motherfucker. The Daily Read. Your source for news, politics, sports, and all things trending. Here's your host, Marcus Gentry. I would like to say to my fans and my family that of my sponsorship, um, to the haters too. I, I apologize as much as I'm disappointed. I know that when I sit on the track, I don't represent myself. I represent a community that has shown me great support, great love. And to y'all, I, I feel y'all. And so I apologize for the fact that I need to know how to control my emotions or deal with my emotions during that time. But sitting here, I, I just say, don't judge me because I am human. I'm you. I just happen to run a little faster. Um, I understand. Good morning and welcome to the Daily Read, and I am your host, Marcus Gentry. I had to stop that video right there because uh, the bullshit started piling up. I'm just going to put it out there, people. Uh, that was Shikari Richardson. Was She was going to be one of the fastest women in the world uh, as far as 2021 and the Olympics. Uh, she threw away everything for weed, for weed, for marijuana. Uh, what I have to say about that, some of y'all might not like, I don't care. I pay my own bills. I do my own thing. I don't have to answer to no networks or none of that. Uh, I've ran across this so many times, dealing with relationships, friends, family, People would throw away everything just to get high. To me, that's junkie status. Okay? If you talk about crackheads or heroin addicts or pill poppers that throw away everything just for that high and you call them junkies or addicts, you got to say the same thing about marijuana smokers. I'm sorry, people. You're going to have to label it the same. A lot of people feel like marijuana should be legal. I do too. Because I don't think it's as, as harsh a thing as everybody trying to make it out to be. Some people always say that I hate marijuana, this and that. No, that's not true. I'd be glad when they legalize it so I can start selling it. I, I, I already have plans on opening a shop, a smoke shop, immediately. As soon as they make it legal across the United States, I'm trying to get myself a, a, a marijuana shop. Period. Because that's a cash cow. My thing is, never throw away, never throw away everything for a high. I don't care what the circumstances is, you know, never throw it away. And then this, this, this apology that, that, you know, it goes on. I had to stop it. And the reason why I stopped the apology is because there was a piece of this apology where she said, you know, I'm only human and I want to uh, 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 tell my haters and stuff like that. You heard somebody in the background that was recording this chuckle. I'm going to play it for you again so y'all can hear it. Listen very carefully to the person in the background laughing. Sitting here, I, I just say, don't judge me because I am human. I'm, I'm you. I just happen to run a little faster. Um, hmm. I understand. You heard that person say, hmm. You know, it, it's, it's like a joke to them. And she's doing this. She's basically doing this because she has sponsors. Remember when I just said that that, you know, she threw away a lot of stuff. She had the opportunity for her name to be in the history books, like uh, Jackie Joyner Kersher and, 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 and all of the greats that came before her. And she threw it away just to get high, you know, to be cool. And, and, I, and I understand the excuse she gave. I heard it. And this is why a lot of people are going to be mad at me for saying what I'm saying. But I'm telling you, that apology she just gave, it was garbage. She stands to lose millions of dollars because she kept talking about her sponsors. 
she wants to apologize to her sponsors. This is people like Nike, Adidas, you know, all the name brand athletic wear that people uh, wear when they go to the gym. These are these are sponsors. And she just want to apologize to them and, 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 and to her haters. And you got somebody in the background chuckling, you know, I, I didn't even want to talk about this story, you know, but but it's trending right now because a lot of people are on the fence about this. It's clear. It's crystal clear to me. I've I've literally ran. I, I've literally ran across uh, girlfriends I've had in the past that they wouldn't even get a good job because good jobs piss test you. When you go find you a good job somewhere, they're going to make you drop. And if you got any marijuana in your system, they're not going to hire you. So this one particular female friend of mine, that I, uh, ex of mine that I dated, she would literally go out to low paying jobs that don't pay her number like every two weeks, two, 200 bucks, two, 300 bucks, just enough money for her to get by. Why? Because she didn't want to stop smoking long enough to pass a piss test. That's junkie status. Use a junkie. Use a use a use a uh, you know, and, and I know people that smoke marijuana, they swear me down that they can't be junkies. They think that they're above crackheads and 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 and, and heroin addicts and stuff like that. You're not. I've been out here in the streets. I done, I done sold a little weed before, back when I was younger. And we had weed junkies back then. If you tell a weed, a, a person that smokes weed, don't come to my house after a certain time, and they come knocking at your door at 2 in the morning talking about, man, I'm sorry, uh, 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 you got a, 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 a sack of weed. That's junkie status. You can't wait until the morning or some other time. Go get you a uh, go get you a beer or something. Go get you a, a bottle of whiskey. You know, you gotta come knocking on somebody's door at two, three, or four o'clock in the morning. Get out of here, you a junkie. I'm sorry, people, but we got to face the reality about this whole weed thing. And I hope they do make it legal. But that doesn't mean you can just smoke and pe expect people to still hire you, because just like the whole alcohol thing. I'm a truck driver. I can't get drunk on the job. I might kill somebody. I like to drink. I sip on something every now and then. Matter of fact, I do a, I do a liquor tasting on my show. I'm going to bring that back because a lot of people say they like my liquor tasting because they've seen liquors on my show that I've never that they've never seen before. And what one of my neighbors down the street we was all sitting around talking, and uh, I had pulled out a bottle of caramel whiskey, and he ain't never seen it before. So, you know, some people that I know, they like my, my, my liquor tasting, but I know how to put them bottles up and go get my money. This is sad, man. She had a chance to be in the history books. Because she is, like she said, fast. She's, she's probably the fastest woman on the planet right now. She can't even participate. And I heard a guy say, it's not just sad for her. It's sad to the people that was competing against her because if they win, they're going to always question in their mind, could I have beaten her? Because she can't participate. So it's a sad thing all the way around. Even her competitors are upset about this. Because her competitors are saying to themselves. Now that she's eliminated. I might win. But dang. I want to beat her. I want to prove that I'm faster than her. So this is just a sad case all the way around people. And like I said. Uh. I really didn't want to talk about that, but it is trending. And on my show, I do politics, news, sports, all things trending. And this falls in line with sports and uh, things trending. So 
I just wanted to talk about that. We finna come, we finna go on the first commercial break. And when we get back, we're gonna talk about these cops. These cops are uh, filling up with white supremacists. And there's two cases that just popped up that one case is in Alameda, California, where a police officer had played a Taylor Swift uh, sound audio to drown out any chances of him from being heard on social media because the algorithm. I'm going to talk about that. There's another case of a separate police department in a whole nother state where one of the police chiefs wrote KKK on the back of a black police officer's uh, 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 rain uniform and laughed about it like it was funny and even the black guy laughed and we're going to talk about that too people because I've always said on my show you got all of these white supremacists in the police force what are you black cops doing? What 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 are you black police officers doing? Y'all see the bigotry. Y'all see the racism. Y'all out there with these people. How come you're not standing up? And you're going to get an answer to that question when I show you this clip. I'm going to talk, talk about this stuff. We're going to talk about this when we get back. This is The Daily Read. We'll be back. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. Me and Bae gon' always be tight So you not with me every single day and night Even when they start to actin' like a fool Yeah, they they love it every single thing you do You know that they can always be themselves They love each other more than anybody else And every day as you see I'm on YouTube You know there's not one, it'll always be just two The Daily Read. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with The Daily Read, and I am your host, Marcus Gentry. Now, now that we've got the uh, celebrity gossip out the way with Shikari, let's talk about these, uh, these crooked police officers. They're doing any and everything they can, and they're learning people. They're getting better at covering up things in a new age of social media. And this is about to be a trend. I can see it coming. Uh, this first clip I'm about to show you is of uh, uh, Alameda, California, California uh, police officer who's covering up the things he's saying to this person by taking out his phone and playing a Taylor Swift song. Now, he knows because, the, like I said, they're, th they're sitting around thinking of ways to beat the whole social media being put on camera. Next thing you know, you're going to have police officers beating people in the streets while they're playing uh, some kind of uh, song by an artist who has copyright on his music. See, when you, see I'm, let me explain this before I play the clip. Music that I play on my show, I pay for it. Basically, what I'm saying is, there are sites, there are websites. See, first of all, I'm 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 teaching people out there in in social media world that does social media like I do. You can have your site blocked or your your video taken down if you play copyrighted music that you haven't gotten permission to play. You don't have to get direct permission from the artists themselves, but there are ways that you can pay for copyrighted music to have it played on your show. Okay? It doesn't cost much. All the artists want to do is get paid for their talent and their work and their music. So they have websites that you can pay $2, $3, $5, $10, $15, $20, $30, $40, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $200, $300, $400, $500, $600, $700, $800, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $
three dollars five dollars download the copyrighted music and you can use it okay what the police officers are doing what the police officers are doing now is they're taking their phones out when they're talking to people and they don't want the things they're saying which might be wrong or against the law and they're sitting there talking to a person with somebody's copyrighted music playing in the background what happens is and i know plenty of people on facebook who've had their facebook uh post taken down because of copyright infringement and youtube post taken down because of copyright i know plenty of people like that i've i've even had some of my stuff flagged until i started learning ways to get around that legally okay but see, the cops don't realize, even though they're trying to be smart, they don't realize that all that young man had to do when he was talking to that police officer was pay a couple of dollars, pay for the uh, the right to use that music in his video. Once he paid for the right to use that music in his video, he could have played the full clip of that officer talking to him with that music in the background and his and his and his video would not have been taken down so i just want y'all to be aware of this this is a new thing that they're trying to do let me get into the video this is this is this is some serious stuff it's about to be some serious stuff people let's go back to the beginning it was on the walls right can you remember from the walls now you put it here. I'm just talking about what is the difference? All right. Right there where, where the video got quiet, that's when he pushed play on Taylor Swift. Okay. So when he pushed play on Taylor Swift, all the sound from that point on went silent. Okay. So you have to read the transcripts of what that young man said, which goes against probably what the police said. In other words, in other words, basically, now he can lie and said, I didn't say that. Prove it. But I got you on videotape. Yeah, you do, but the video is silent because you can't play copyrighted music. And I want some of you artists out here to be aware of this too. Because if a big case comes up, where a police out here is brutalizing somebody or lying to somebody about what they said on tape and they act like they can't prove it because the audio is blanked out. Some of you artists need to step up and say, you know what? I will allow that brief snippet of my audio sound to be played just so we can expose this clown. So some of you artists need to be aware of this too especially you ones that's out here trying to fight for justice too. You need to be aware of this because this is a tactic that the police are using. They're, in, uh, in other words, they're using your copyrighted material to keep the truth from being out here in the public. My thing is, if you're a police officer and you're working in the line of duty you, and you're doing things correctly, you shouldn't mind being audio tape. You shouldn't mind your face being on uh, any kind of social platform because you're doing your job correctly. The only time you're going to do your job incorrectly and do something, the only time you're going to do something like this is if you're doing your job incorrectly. If you're not out here doing what you're supposed to do as a police officer. That's the only reason you would want to uh, even play a Taylor Swift song like that. Something's wrong here. And now I'm going to play this next clip and I want to give a, a big shout out to TYT, the Young Turks, because uh, these guys are on point. I love the Young Turks and I suggest you guys uh, watch their programming uh, on YouTube or wherever you can catch them on podcast because the Young Turks, man, they, they uh, Anna, uh, Chank and all the associates that be on their podcast. And their show, man, they really bring it, man. I'm talking about they bring some good, hard-hitting stuff to the media. You know, I get a lot of my stuff from uh, TYT, 
uh, Sam Cedar, uh, you know, uh, it's just a, it's just a list. It's just a list of uh, Farrell. It's just a list of of of, of high quality uh, social media people who are out here bringing real truth to the people instead of that stuff you see on the the news because the news is going to water things down and the news are paid by corporations and regardless of whether it's fox news msnbc or cnn their news is going to be uh tamed down because of the fact that they have major multi-million dollar sponsors but when you're dealing with people like tyt who might be self-funded they might get donations for normal people they're going to bring you better uh, quality work and better quality news. So, and that's, and that's exactly what I try to bring here. And I very rarely ask for donations, you know, and, and if people want to give to my show, I always leave the link uh, to my cash out in the bottom. And if people, and if people give to my show, my, my, the, the proceeds that come to my show, it doesn't go straight into my pocket. It goes back into my show because I work for a living. Okay, I just want to make that clear to people who donate to my show that love my, my show and what I bring. My, my, my personal small little space that I bring to uh, social media and things of that nature. But uh, let's get into this next clip because I want y'all to hear what, the, uh, what they're going to do about the investigation on this. There's a lot of back and forth with this. Uh, the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, they are now investigating the matter. Uh, when asked about the video, a spokesperson for the Sheriff's Office, Sergeant Ray Kelly said that both the video and complaints have been sent to an internal affairs unit for investigation. Uh, while the office has no policy that governs whether you can play Taylor Swift or music in an attempt to censor YouTube content from a public encounter, Kelly said personnel will be made aware that is not acceptable moving forward. We'll now, basically what he said, basically what he's saying people is, these cops done sat around thinking of ways that they can beat the whole social media thing. They're sitting around thinking of ways that they can cheat the system and stop from being exposed for lying, uh, planting evidence, uh, conversations that they're having with people and they're probably telling people the wrong laws because they don't know the laws themselves. So instead of them being exposed and called out, you know, they're, they're using copywritten work by artists to cover up the sound of what they're saying, you know, and, and, and now they're talking about investigating, but if this right here goes, uh, gets swept up under the rug, you're going to eventually have cops all over the United States doing this trick of when they're talking to you about, man, you got a broken tail like, uh, that's why I stopped you. The whole time he got this song playing in the background, he's lying. Your tail light wasn't broken. He probably stopped you because you're black, you know, and he think you got some drugs or a weapon in the car. You know, it, it's it's about to get it's about to get nasty with this. I can I can see this uh, being a real problem in our communities with these police officers and playing copyright written music. That's another reason why I had to uh, bring this to the public's attention. You know, like I said, other people are talking about this, like Tyt, the Young Turks, but you're not gonna see stuff like this on mainstream uh, news media. Why? You know, this is some stuff that mainstream news media is supposed to be talking about. This right here. I'm going to get into this next commercial break. This is going to be a, a short show today, people, because, uh, you know, I'm just coming back from uh, the 4th of July uh, a party last night. And and we had a good time at the park. You know, my niece and nephews. Um they popped fireworks out there. We danced a little bit. We had a good time. And, and, and unfortunately, since I came early and I'm one of the, uh, the, the eldest men in my family, I'm out there cooking. You know, I came out there just to have a good time and hang out. And they got me on the grill. So, so you know, 
it happens. You know, for all you guys out there who probably the oldest cousin in your family or the oldest out your family, and a lot of the elders done passed on, and now it's up to you to basically lead the family, man. It's 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 rough. You know, it, it, you got you got weight on your shoulders. But we're gonna get back into uh, we're gonna do this next commercial break. When we come back, we'll get back into the show. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. I'm ready. Okay, I'm not ready. Mm -mm. I'm ready. Welcome to Are You Scared Talent Shows. It's a new talent show that we put on TV for y'all to get used to because these people can't act. And so we're going to show y'all what the real deal is when you get on the front of the camera and what some garbage acting look like. i tell you, garbage acting. This is Are You Scared Talent Shows, okay? I'm going to show y'all some acts or some talents. $5,000, it really ain't $5,000, I'll just say $5,000, because $5,000 sound like some people would want to come and join a talent show if it was paying $5,000. So, I'm your host, Eric Jones. Are you scared of talent shows? The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. In Ohio, there's a police chief who thought it was a good idea and just hilarious to put um, KKK, Ku Klux Klan on the back of some type of uniform on a desk inside of the precinct. Now this is a white police chief and he did this to a black cop. All right, people, again, this is a whole separate police department in another state and the problem with this is, like I said, it's a lot of white supremacists that have infiltrated government in all aspects of government. And you have black officers that's working beside these people that got their head down and they're dealing with white supremacists every day. My thing is, what are you see? See, the, 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 the subject matter of this show today is basically how the police have been infiltrated by you know white supremacy and the tactics and things that they're trying to use right now in order to skirt the system okay my thing is when you watch this next clip of this officer writing kkk on the back of a black officer's uniform watch the reaction of the black officer I know the whole thing right now is you're studying why was the police chief doing this KKK thing, but that's not the issue. The issue, that's part of the issue, but the main issue to me is the reaction of the black cop. Okay, now watch this clip. This is going to surprise you. So I want you to see this footage. There's no sound to it because it's literally the footage inside of the precinct. So here's what you see. You see that yellow thing there? I want you to pay attention to that because something's about to happen. Here's the chief. What he's putting on that yellow garment is a Ku Klux Clown, excuse me, Ku Klux Klan sign, a KKK sign. That's what he's doing. Now he's put it on there. I think he may have taped it on. And here's the officer's desk and, and he kind of chuckles about it. And he looks at it, chief comes out, he makes some kind of joke, hey, you know, you, what well, you gonna fire me now? Whatever he said, whatever goofy thing he said. Uh, but this was funny to the police chief. I did now, um, I know that everybody's focused on the fact that the police chief did what he did, putting the Ku Klux Klan sign on the back of this black police officer's uh, uh, Parker, his, his raincoat. Now, if you look at the two people, the black officer and the other white officer that was in the doorway, look at those two people carefully. The black officer, he kind of chuckles like, <laughs> man, y'all crazy. You know, 
And then the other white officer that came in the door, if you look inside the doorway, you'll see another white officer in there. He kind of looks nervous about it. Like, man, I can't believe this is happening. But he didn't say nothing. He just went on back in the back. The, the two problems I have with the whole this whole thing is, number one, how the white guy, the black guy, the black officer chuckles like, <laughs> this is this is funny. You know, he should have immediately told the chief off like, man, look, don't ever do this to me again. Matter of fact, uh, we finna talk about this to uh, somebody because because this is not going to keep happening. These are the people that are out here assaulting blacks, uh, shooting blacks in the back arresting us these are the people who hold our lives in their hands they have a license to arrest you and detain you they have a license to kill if they feel like their life is in danger these are the people who's in charge of all of that they're playing Ku, Ku Klux Klan jokes and I'm gonna tell you something else that's gonna mess some of y'all up this goes deeper this goes deeper than the whole Ku Klux Klan thing. That police chief, I think, was testing that black guy to see where his loyalties lie. And the black guy failed very miserably. Let me explain that in detail what I mean. I like to use real world analogies of things I've been through in the 46 years I've been on this planet to explain some of the things that's going on right here. When I first started truck driving, when I first started truck driving, they, they laid the rules out to me that this was before the electronic logs. Okay, this was before the electronic logs. They laid the rules out to me. You got to take your logs down accurately or if the if the state trooper stops you uh you can get fined heavily and you might get fired okay a dispatcher called me up he said hey man why did you stop uh what's going on i said i'm out of hours i can't drive anymore today he said man i gotta get this load in the dock this afternoon and you got about 50 more miles. Now, I knew that there wasn't a, 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 a it's called the speed. I, I knew that there wasn't a way station between where I was and the dock where I had to take my load to. That dispatcher was testing me to see if I was going to run over my hours. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. I don't do that on my show. When he talked to me, he was like, man, look, man, uh, I really need to get that load there, man. He said, I got you. When he said, I got you, he means I'm going to give you better loads to where you can make more money later on. I got you. I started my truck back up. I cooked the books a little bit. Kept on driving, got there, delivered the load. I asked the people, could I park in their parking lot because I'm out of hours? They said no. So I drove to the nearest pilot, which was like 10 miles away, and parked my truck and went to sleep for the night. I told you guys this because I'm basically letting you know that I have no doubt in my mind that that police chief was probably a white supremacist. But he was testing that black guy to see how he would react, to see if, uh, you know, uh, he was down with the boys in blue or was he down with uh, Black Lives Matter or something like that. And like I said, that officer, that black officer, he failed miserably by chuckling and shucking and jiving. He failed miserably. I failed. I should have told my dispatcher. Because see I didn't learn this later on. Like I said I was a new truck driver. And I was thirsty to get money. So I kept running. 
But as I got older in trucking and started learning more and start talking to other truck drivers, those other truck drivers started teaching me and telling me, hey man, that's your license. Protect your license. Don't worry about the truck driving company. If you run out of hours and you can't get the, the load delivered there that day, do your, 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 your rest period, get up and take the load there the next morning. Because if the state trooper would have stopped me, they would have made me park my truck anyway, and I would have got a fine of almost a thousand dollars. And I could have possibly gotten my license taken if it's severe enough. So and and I and, and he and he did. He did. He my dispatcher. After I did that, I showed him that I was willing to get out here and do some things that was slightly shady to get money. So they kept giving me big loads. And I think that's the same thing happened here at this police precinct. I think that that chief of police was testing that black guy to see how he would react to something like the KKK written on the back of his... Uh, his uh, raincoat and the black guy failed miserably now later on they're not telling who said what but later on there was a uh, there was something filed saying that he was being harassed okay I don't even think that that black guy filed that report to be honest with you because by looking at how he reacted to that, I don't even think that was in his character. I think that that other white guy, that other police officer that was in the doorway who witnessed all of that, I think he's the one who filed a complaint on that. Somebody filed a complaint about it. And the police uh, chief, I think he got fired or he got uh, released or something like that. I'm going to tell you to show you the clip about all of that in just a second. But one or two things happened. That black guy probably sat around and thought about it and said, this ain't right. And he complained about it. Or my guess is he wasn't the one who filed the complaint. I'm thinking it was that other, that, that white officer. Either way it go, he should have dealt with it immediately. Not sit around and contemplate it. He should have nipped that in the bud immediately because this, this, this police chief was testing him. I can look at him and tell the whole, the whole situation had, had popped off. He was testing him to see how he would take it, how he would react to it. And from what I seen on that camera, he's a sad sack. But let me get into uh, the next clip about what's apparently is about to happen with this uh, police chief. He's, uh, he thought it was a joke. How can you possibly think that you could put something on somebody's jacket like that? And especially if they were African American and think it is a joke. This is the most egregious and offensive thing you could possibly do. And it's embarrassing and disgusting. There was a complaint that followed afterward. Um, Sheffield Lake Law Director David Graves brought the incident to Brings Attention, um, who's the sheriff, Tuesday and characterized it to the mayor as really serious. The union that represents the police brought a harassment complaint to Graves' office. Uh, Bring went straight to Campo's office after learning about the incident. Uh, this is how Campo reacted to the news. Um, I came into the chief's office and he's standing there with a smile on his face. Bring said, he goes, so am I fired? Now, just the reaction alone of the police chief, he really didn't think nothing was gonna happen to him, to be honest with you. That's why he asked the sheriff, you know, am I fired? And that's why I don't think that the black officer said anything, which is sad. I think it was somebody else who filed that complaint 
somebody he probably told what happened to or it could have been that other officer that was hanging in the doorway when everything came about. Somebody filed a complaint later. My thing is, you got to be on that immediately. These are the people who are protecting us. And I always say on my show, what are you black police officers doing? You got to know that there's white supremacists working around you. On the police force with you. Going on patrol with you. What are you guys doing? I try to bring uh, uh, some good stuff to my show. And I want you people to uh, recognize this stuff and what's going on around you. And I hope you guys learn something from today. And to uh, Miss Richardson, Shikari, uh, it's okay to mourn your family member that passed. It's okay to mourn. And I want to say something to her. You know, it's a, it's a sad situation that you're in. Your, 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 uh, someone in your family passed. But never, never sacrifice a future as great as yours for a high or alcohol or drugs never put the dope sack or the dope bag in front of the money bag and I think this young lady just lost it all she might still be considered and she she might just bounce back in the in but but you never know what happens to her in four years she could have a baby within four years by the time the next Olympics come around uh, she can lose a step her speed can slow up a little bit. So a lot of things can happen to her in four years until the next Olympics come around. But for this Olympics right here, she's not going to be able to put her name in lights with the greats all because of a joint, a blunt. And that's sad because I think she truly could have been one of the greats uh, that everybody would have been talking about for the next 20 years of that little girl with the with the with the flaming red hair, uh, one of the fastest women in the world. That's 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 over with for this year. You know she can hang that up. And that apology, if I was her, I would take that apology down because it was so lame. And then she had a person laughing in the background, like, you know, it was a joke to them. You know this, this the, her apology, you know, it was a joke. You know, plain and simple. But this is the Daily Read, and I'm out. The business, motherfucker. Man, the Daily Read.